Hi everyone and welcome to episode 1 of my Grimdark Terrain series. In this episode we're going to be taking a quick look at some basic applications and some things to get your brain tingling and little ideas of weathering that we can add to our terrain, whether it's for your battlefield or to place in the background of some of your photos. Uh, this episode we're going to be taking a look specifically at some uh, typical weathering and grime and stuff that's going to be built up and then we're going to go into some really quick and easy rust application. Really quickly, if you're not a subscriber already, please remember to hit that subscribe button to not to miss out on my other episodes. And also, if you could, it would really help me out if you could like this video as well. So first of all, I have primed this in the primer by Vallejo, which is Israeli sand. Uh, if you've not got this, you could use something like Wraithbone, and then later on after the wash phase, you could go straight into the dry brush after that. But the first thing that we're going to do once we've done this is actually get Wraithbone and use a dry brush technique and just quickly dry brush over the entire model itself. Now when it comes to dry brushing itself, I'd recommend like a, a large makeup brush like what I've got here. Or if you really want to go out uh, on a whim and get some of the Artist Opus D brushes, that is such a fantastic set of brushes and I highly recommend them. Um, I've been a little bit naughty in this video uh, at this stage. Uh, I'm actually dry brushing and using kitchen towel, which is not what I'd recommend when it comes to dry brushing. Um, obviously I have wet the dry brush quite a lot uh, before hand with this and the cloth itself is a little bit damp but if you want to learn how to do some really good dry brushing then I'll leave a link to the Artist Opus uh, dry brushing tutorial uh, which uses a texture palette as well I would highly recommend using that method um, but because it's a piece of terrain and I'm only going to use these in the background of photos it doesn't really matter at this stage and it doesn't really matter as well as you know like if you get some like scratchy bits and streaky bits and some areas are a little bit lighter than others it all adds to that weathering when it comes to the terrain uh, and I'm just using like backwards and forwards, ups and downs, because there's that much detail on this specific uh, bit of terrain uh, that I need to catch all those areas and make sure that I am getting in those crevices. But it doesn't have to be perfect, but just literally work your way around and dry brush the entire of your miniature. Now moving into a couple of base coats, uh, for the metallics I have used Pro Acryl Dark Silver and then I just go over with a very light dry brush of Rumfang Steel just over all the areas. Now the little gridded window section in the middle, um, once I've dry brushed the, the Rumfang Steel onto there, what I do is I get, just to, add a, just to break it up a little bit, I get the contrast paint, blood contrast paint, contrast paint, blood uh, angels red, and I just apply that on there. Now that's for two reasons. Because I want it to be like a, a ready steel. What happens is when you go over it with a contrast paint because it's translucent, you get that like metallic red uh, that comes through, um, and again it just breaks up the whole thing. And you know, if at this point, depending on what you're painting terrain wise, if you want to paint some of the pipes copper. Um, or any other colours, uh, feel free to do that. Again, because the rest of the tutorial will just follow along from there. Now, moving on to the first stage of our weathering, and yes, you've probably guessed it already, we're going to head over to our trusty streak and grime. Uh, now, first of all, I'm going to be applying this through an airbrush, and it's for a very specific reason, but first of all, obviously, safety first. When applying this sort of stuff, it's not good to breathe in, so make sure you're in a well-ventilated area, and make sure that you do have like uh, an appropriate safety breathing mask, because this stuff flies everywhere, and you don't want to be breathing it in. The reason I'm doing it through an airbrush, you can do it by brush, um, is because I want most of the grime to be at the bottom. So as you can see here, as I'm spraying along, I'm paying more attention and building it up more towards the bottom and making it lighter uh, at the top, as though like dirt and grimes accumulated more at the bottom as it's rained and sort of run down. Uh, you can do this with a brush, obviously just water it down a little bit more, or should I say thin it down a little bit more with mineral spirits towards the top, uh, and as you get down to the bottom just literally apply it straight from the bottle. Now once you've let it dry and you can use an air, a hairbrush 
a hair brush, a hair dryer, don't use any hair brush, a hair dryer to uh, dry it to speed up the process. We're going to get these little makeup sponges. They're like what if, you know, ladies and stuff use to apply makeup to their eyelids or whatever. Just search them. You can buy big bags of them off Amazon for like a few pound or a few dollars. And I've just got a little tray of mineral spirits and I'm just dipping it in uh, and wiping away. I'm using a downward motion for most of it, especially up here to the top as we're going to be adding some little streaks and stuff a little bit later on as all like rain waters made it drip down and stuff um, but the beauty of the using these sponges um, I used to use the old cotton buds which is fine yes they are cheaper but you get a lot of fuzzies with them whereas these um, they're not as abrasive obviously you've still got to be careful I've not applied any um, uh, you know like satin varnishes or anything like that at this stage but they're not as abrasive so you can just go on there and wick away and not have to worry about wiping excess paint off and also you can like obviously you can i'm switching them and i do throw them away but you can like sort of not wash them out but get rid of most of the the streak and grime off your sponge if you don't want to use a lot of them uh, in your little bowl of mineral spirits and it's just a lot easier tool in my eyes they do grow quite big um, they're a bit like a, a lady's tampon uh, when when, uh, when when they get like the stuff on them they do tend to expand quite a bit and it's really weird from how small they start to how big that they finish um, and then towards the bottom here uh, I'm obviously I'm not wiping away as much because I want to leave a little bit more of the heavier stuff down in the crevices at the bottom and then when you've done with that just give it a few minutes to dry again I just use a hair dryer not a hair brush because it'll be there for hours and just let that dry off a little bonus tip as well you can get something like a normal brush if you want to get to some of more of them crevices uh, and wipe and wick away your streak and grime with that as well and it also helps add uh, to you know so it's a little bit more streaky as though the rain has affected it and it started to streak down but any little crevices like this that you struggle to get into uh, it works really well with just a standard brush now we're moving on to some weathering streaks now all these paints are abtalong 502 oil paints um, the left hand side cardboard uh, sorry the right hand side is for the rust and this side the left hand side is for like our grime uh, and all i'm going to be doing is uh, if you've ever heard of the oil dotting technique i'm just going to go on with all some different colors uh, i will list the colors the exact colors that i've used here will be in the description below uh, but essentially you know i do encourage people to experiment with different colors and people want to know specific brands of brown and stuff but it, it, it's not really necessary because again you want to try and add as much variation into that as well uh, but we're just going on there and getting our oil. I'm just being really rough with this. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, and in certain areas, I'm just dotting all different colours, um, like the lighter tones, the darker tones, and I'm just dotting them all around. And then what we're going to do a little bit later on, uh, once we've done the, the rust stage, so applying the rust colours onto like areas where it would be dripping from the metal, is we're going to get our brush. So once it's had a little bit of time to dry, we're just going to get our brush with a tiny 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 amount of mineral spirits on and just using an up and down motion we're just going to start to blend all these little dots together and it acts as like a filter and some of them will turn into streaks and again you will have to keep wiping your brush um, and going back in into sections just to make them that little bit extra uh, streaky now for the next stage of weathering, you've probably guessed it yet again, it is our trusty old Dirty Downs Rust. Now we're not going to be applying this in our typical fashion, what I've got is a cotton stick and I've pre-dipped that in some water. Now I'm going to dip right in the bottom of my thing, and you can see the liberal amount that I've got here on my cotton stick. Um, now what that's going to do is as I'm starting to dab and apply it's going to go on a little bit thicker it's going to make some places look a little bit extra crusty um, and then also as we're getting through it the water is going to push through and it, again it's just going to add to that variation but the beauty of this is as it starts to dry on the tip of your q-tip because you know dirty down just does dry extremely fast it's going to leave like lumps and like crusty deposits which are also going to add to uh, the color and i'm just literally going around all my metallic areas 
dabbing, applying different pressures and rolling it and, and doing loads of different just techniques and getting all those like lumps and crust off it. And then in some areas what I'll do, before I've even used it all, I'll dip my cotton bud back in the water and again I'm going to apply it onto areas just to get that different variation of rust. And this just makes everything look as though it's been heavily, heavily rusted. Again, if you're not familiar with Dirty Downs Rust, it is the my most favoritist product on the planet for miniature painting. And good news, I actually have a four-part masterclass coming out uh, very soon. I'm just currently editing those files. It's all been filmed. Um, and the first one is going to be free for all my YouTube uh, subscribers. So if you don't want to miss, if you're not a subscriber and you don't want to miss out on that, make sure you are a subscriber with notifications turned on so you don't miss it. Um, and then the other episodes will be going on Patreon, um, but episode 2 will be also free for my members. So if you want to become a member and support this channel, you can do that for as little as one ninety nine per month and get a lot of exclusive perks. Next up, we're going to be moving on to some pigment powders. These are the two that I'm going to specifically be using on this tutorial. Uh, these are Vallejo ones. I think it come with a set, like a rust oxidized set that I got from Amazon with a couple of different uh, pigment powders in. Uh, the first one is the brown. Now, this is just going to act as like dirt and grime that's accumulated uh, around uh, like the base of the terrain. Now, one thing I will say with pigment powders is a, a, one of the main questions I always get asked when I use them, because I, I do think they are a crucial part of, you know, the grimdark style and just miniature painting in general, because they're so versatile and there's loads of different stuff that you can do with them. I think, you know, you should all pick some up and experiment with them. Now, one of the main questions I always get asked is, you know, what do I use to fix them um, and, you know, what's the best way to apply them? Now, for me, I just literally get them straight out of the pot uh, with a, a dry, clean brush, like an old brush, and just literally whack it and brush it into all the the areas. Um, obviously, now for the rust area, I'm just adding some into certain areas, and it just creates like really dry, oxidized rust that sometimes goes a little bit powdery. If you've ever seen real like really rusty stuff in real life and I'm just again applying that to it as well but going back to the the fixers now because I only paint display pieces and I'm not actually gaming or anything with them I don't actually use any fixers now in this set did come like a little pot of a pigment fixer I've never used it I've, I'll be honest with you I'm not even sure how to use it I know some people say you know you can varnish over them but you sort of lose that powdery with it i suppose you could put like a layer of varnish down and then powder onto the top of it uh, again this is something that you know i'd probably recommend doing a bit of research on because it's something i've never done because i only display mine so it doesn't really i'm not picking them up and touching them uh, but if you do want to fix it then you know there are varnishes and pigment fixes out there that you can use um, but once you've done that you can even apply water to these and and, and do it as well the, the so versatile pigment powders um to be able to achieve like grim dark effects and if you've never used them go out and get some there's no specific brand that's the best they all sort of do the the same thing now last up we've got some contrast paint now you can either do this before or after you've added um your pigment powder and all i'm doing i've got some like uh contrast wildwood it's just a dark brown and feel free to get a couple of different ones and do this but we're literally just going to add a little bit of water to our brush and flick it and splatter it up as though like vehicles have drove past it and or like people have walked past it and it's sort of splattered up the walls um, again this just adds another layer of weathering um, but again you can you know apply this then put some more pigment powders on the top it's entirely up to you how much of this you want to add and that's it that is the first episode complete so you can see there weren't many stages in there we achieved it pretty quick i think the whole thing took me around 10 to 15 minutes um but yeah in episode two we're going to be taking a look at some more different colors some more 
like unique weathering techniques that we can use uh, even going into like verdigris and moss uh, and all that sort of good stuff so if you don't want to miss out on them please make sure you are a subscriber and guys it really really helped me out massively if you could just hit that like button uh, and leave me a comment in the comment section below so i hope you've enjoyed this video i'm looking forward to episode two and until then we will catch you in my next video